We have to partner with each other. I believe that's the only way the open internet can win. So first of all, kokai means open waters in Japanese. Uh, it's also slang for open for business. In kokai, there is an opportunity for us to work together. So let, let's talk about what that is. We are trying to give our advertisers as much power and control without overwhelming them with complexity. What we are also trying to pow power is another concept that I just want to lay foundationally for this discussion, which is decisioning. So what is happening in our ecosystem is as more and more decisioning is moving to the buy side where we're willing to pay for it. And that's the only way that content can sustain itself. That's the only way that it can make enough money to pay for itself. The buy side has to justify that by increasing the efficacy. And the only way that we can do that is if we make the tools better. And that's what we're after today. And almost always, it is worth it for the buy side to pay a bit more for the power of decisioning. And if you do pay more for the power of decisioning, you better take advantage of it. The only way the open internet is going to be successful is if advertisers put their first party data to work. One of the things that we understand deeply at the trade desk is that the only way that we can win is if we build and maintain your trust around first party data so that you can put your data to work. Galileo was one of those products where we made it easier than ever to launch or to use your first party data. I'm excited to announce that uh, uh, Galileo today is upgraded. We've added 14 new data partners. We have seven new CDP cleanroom partners. We have uh, a ton of UX improvements around Gal Galileo that makes it easier for you to leverage your first party data. I do wanna talk about another concept, another foundational concept in order for us to have this discussion today about the concept of seeds. So you're going to see this throughout our platform from this day forward. Seeds are that really concentrated data that is insights about the people that have already bought your product. So if you think of those as seeds that can be planted and grow into something much bigger, it is critical that we learn how to harness the power of those seeds in order for, for us collectively as an open internet to be successful. We've been chasing relevant seeds, expressiveness, and our platform going forward will be more audience-based in the paradigms that we represent in our UI. It doesn't mean that you won't be able to select inventory and you won't be able to have power and control over that as you always have, but there is so much more that we can be doing with first-party data and with audiences, and in fact, we have to in order to progress the open internet. We have done over 450 integrations in the last two quarters alone. So 52 in user data, 44 in inventory, meaning a media inventory, and over 350 platform API integrations. The Trade Desk is an open collaboration hub where you can develop any of these types of products. I really look at these simplified as these six types of products. So today we are launching our partner portal where we are open for business. We are more insistent on creating an effective and clean and clear and honest supply chain than ever before. And that means that we wanna buy inventory that has global placement ID on it. We wanna buy inventory that properly labels in-stream versus outstream. We wanna buy inventory that has a higher probability of viewability. If it doesn't, it's not effective. And we want auctions that have integrity. So OpenPath just celebrated it, it, its first birthday. But really what we're after here is to create a better supply path, to create a better open internet. And we've added over 11,000 destinations, so sites, apps, and channels. Today we're launching new products around open path, and those especially include products for the publishers. We are giving supply chain tr transparency and control so that you can block at the domain or the property level. Uh, we also are creating competitive separation uh, uh, protocols and APIs. Over the next year, instead of doing 20 integrations, our plan is to do 100. Right now, we have deals in the works in Japan, in Indonesia, in Korea, in New Zealand, in the UK, in Spain, and Germany. I'm most excited about the CTV deals that we have all over the world, including here in the United States. I wanna to talk to you about AI. AI has been injected into the Trade Desk platform. It will be a part of our foundation for the next 100 years. We have AI injected in some, uh, in some fashion in all of these ways. What is happening right now is a fundamental revaluation of the assets on the internet. And it is largely driven 
by the, the presence of identity. By this time next year, the majority of CTV impressions will include UID2. This is a game changer for the entire open inter internet because it will have trickle down effects, not just in TV, but in every other uh, uh, channel as well. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is for every advertiser in the world to have an identity strategy. Uh, and what I mean by having an identity strategy is that you have a way to connect your data to your marketing efforts. So I'm very excited to announce today that UID2.com is live. Uh, UID2 development has expanded so that you can actually use UID2, put your data to work without the data itself ever leaving your environment. I wanna take one minute to talk about EUID. We were pedal to the metal on making this a reality across Europe. Not only have we built a robust measurement marketplace, but we've also made it possible for retailers to put their data to work. These are some of the most premier retailers in the world. But one of the innovations that we're here to talk about today is a new product called the Retail Sales Index. So what that means, we can connect the measurement to the targeting without any effort from you. You'll get measurement for free for just signing up for the targeting from these three retailers. But what we're talking about is always on easy measurement from the bottom of the funnel to the top of the funnel that gives a degree of objectivity that no walled garden could ever provide. And by doing that, it makes it possible for us to have objective, effective measurement that is, that is more effective than any other way to do it. And that objectivity, once again, becomes our, our strength. So I'm excited to announce that this is in beta today. Uh, today we're announcing upgrades to a product that we launched a couple of months ago in beta, but our TV quality index. So uh, uh, we, we launched it kind of quietly, so many of you may not know about it. But what it does is it pinpoints the value of professionally produced content. And, and essentially what we're helping to do is shift budgets from UGC to premium, and then we're showcasing the value of premium. I believe this is absolutely required because what has happened is we've taken a lot of the legacy metrics from traditional television and brought them over into digital. And I, I think that's actually helpful, especially because linear and digital are often uh, uh, analyzed together. But because we also have increased cost in digital and because we have the ability to be much more targeted, we also have to be better at measuring and justifying that incremental cost. So as we have relevance score placed throughout the system, we also need measurement to reflect relevance. So uh, there have been amazing products uh, in television in particular to measure reach, but there haven't been uh, uh, reach measurement products that one, go beyond television, but also reflect your individual data. So most of the products have been somewhat basic in are you on target of this a uh, uh, general demographic versus how on target are you to your seed, to your, to your reach. And so this is quantifying mathematically how similar your marketing audiences are at the top of the funnel are to, to those that you're actually uh, selling products to. How quality is my reach? O over the rest of the summer, you're gonna see some pretty dramatic changes to our user experience to orient around the concepts that we've been talking about today. One is what we're calling the shopping cart functionality, and this will come out near the end of the summer. But uh, in the top right of every page, whenever you make a decision, we'll show you the impact of that decision on your relevance score, on your expressiveness, on your budgeting, on your forecasting. Because of the benefits of AI, uh, we will be able to forecast what that's going to look like before you ever do anything. For our most sophisticated users, I want to introduce to you the paradigm uh, for this new user experience. Uh, uh, we, we basically have created a programmatic periodic table. And the reason why I think this is the right paradigm and why I'm so excited about this is actually the same reason why the periodic table exists in the natural world. Basically, we took all the building blocks uh, of the entire universe when we put together the periodic table. That's how every chemical compound is created. That's how everything in the world uh, uh, is constructed. And so if you break it down to its most basic elements, then you make it possible to create all sorts of combinations. So I wanna explain a little bit why we've created this and why this will be the centerpiece uh, of our new user experience. 
On the left, you have things that the user controls. Uh, uh, and at the, at the top, of course, is the advertiser. And at the right, all the way on the right side, you have COA. So you have the pilot on the left and the co-pilot on the right. And then there's all the structure on the left that sets up uh, the rules, the parameters, the restrictions, what part of the funnel are you after, what are the goals that you're after. But in the middle, you have all of these elements that are assembled together to create campaigns. And those are roughly sorted by weight. And weight, in this case, means how much impact are they likely to have and how frequently are you likely to need to change them in order to have optimal impact. What it does by putting them in this order is gives you a rough guideline of what you should change first. Uh, and so by putting things like base bit at the beginning, we make it easy for you to know where to start, which is something that has been really difficult in our space and in our UX to date, because it can be really difficult to know where should I start? What do I do, do next? So as a reminder, today we launched a retail sales index with free retail measurement, a UID2 self-service portal that's coming in July, a quality reach index. We, we launched new tools for open path and supply chain tra transparency. We talked about a new UX that will be out before the end of the summer. We talked about a partner portal. Well, there are 450 integrations that have already been done, can be done with more speed and welcome many, many more products that went GA today, UID2 uh, uh, with AWS, G, uh, Google Cloud and Snowflake, our TVQI index upgraded, Galileo upgraded, and then of course OpenPath upgraded. When we put all of those together and we talk about, in, in my view, the significance of what we could accomplish over the next year or two. If, if just alone we accomplish what we've set out to in UID2 and OpenPath, uh, we really can change the open internet to be much more effective. That is only possible if we all work together. I, I cannot thank those of you that are innovating and building to us, to our advertisers. This would never exist without you, without the agencies. We would be nothing. But you're going to see a ship product like the way we have today, which is more often, much more frequent. You're going to see a lot more innovation. It's going to come more rapidly, more frequently. But I, I think there is an opportunity for us to put our head down, go to work, not forget what we're after. Because if, if we can do that, I really think that what's at the top of the hill is something really beautiful. Thank you so much.